flavorful warming dishes are perfect for wintertime cooking. And if the oven is already on, it absolutely makes sense to braise two dishes at one time. It's important to note that while large tender cuts of meat, such as whole turkey, will cook much faster in convection, when it comes to the tougher cuts of meat that require more cooking, they will still require the longer cooking times. However, because convection circulates heat evenly around the oven, loading the oven with several dishes ensures that they will all cook evenly. If your oven is equipped with uh, an oven meat probe, then be sure to leave it in the drawer when preparing a braise. Because the, when, when you're braising, we are looking for a particular texture. We're looking for that falling off the bone uh, tenderness not a target internal temperature. So I'd like to introduce you to my colleague, Chef Paul. We've been cooking and teaching convection and combi steam convection cooking classes together for many years. And Paul is actually gonna take us through the steps of preparing these two delicious braises. So over to you, Chef Paul. Braising is one of my favorite ways of cooking in the oven. Generally speaking, the tougher cuts of meat produce the more flavor, such as short ribs, lamb shanks, brisket, and pork belly. The first braise I'm preparing is a three pound brisket. I'm using a traditional recipe that involves searing the meat first um, on both sides or all sides, depending on what you're braising, then adding vegetables, aromatics, stock, and red wine. Cover the pan and put it in the oven at 300 degrees for at least three hours or until it's pork tender. If the meat is not quite there yet, um, you can stop the cooking at that point and continue the cooking the next day. Um, the way you want to be able to serve it the next day is you remove the meat from the pan, reduce the cooking juices, slice the meat and put it back into the pan, essentially making it ready to serve for the next day. Yeah, at that point you can put it in the refrigerator then you will have to all you have to do the next day is reheat the brisket gently in the oven for another 30 40 minutes and you'll be ready to serve the next dish i'm preparing is a slow roast pork belly this is not a braise since we are just cooking the meat on its own in an open pan but since it also needs to cook for approximately two and a half three hours at 300 degrees we couldn't resist the great thing about pork belly is that once it's cooked it can be cut into smaller pieces and quickly sauteed and added to many dishes such as ramen, fried rice, vegetable stews, or sandwiches. You have plenty of options. We are following a recipe we found online that recommends not scoring the fat of the pork belly and since we love crackling we decided to give it a go. Key to this recipe is keeping the meat tightly enclosed with foil so that the meat more or less is poached in the rendered fat while the exposed skin is able to crisp. At this point, if you want to refrigerate the pieces that you are not using, it's easy to recrisp them again in the oven the next day. So here you have, with minimal effort, two fabulous dishes that can be prepared with a little prep time and will yield amazing meals all week long.